The Holy Gospel according to St. Mark, the fourth chapter. Glory to you, O Lord. Once again, Jesus was teaching beside the lake, and such a large crowd gathered around that he got into a boat and sat there, and he taught them from the boat while the people stood on the land. He taught them many things in parables, including this one, saying, Listen, a sower went out to sow seeds. Some of the seeds landed on the path, and birds came and ate them up. Other seeds landed in the rocky soil where there wasn't much depth of soil, so they sprang up quickly. But because they had no root, as soon as the sun rose, they were scorched and withered. Other seeds landed among the thorns. These sprang up and grew, but the thorns grew and choked them out so that they bore no grain. And other seeds landed in the good soil. These grew and brought forth grain and yielded 30, 60, and 100 fold. Let anyone with ears to hear listen. Later, when Jesus was alone, those who were with him along with the 12 asked him about the parables. He said to you, has been given the secret of the kingdom of God. But for others, for those outside, they will hear everything in parables. So as it is written in the prophet Isaiah, they will listen but not understand. They will see but not perceive because they will not turn and be forgiven. And then Jesus said to them, Do you not understand this parable? How will you understand any of the parables? The sower sows the word. These are the ones that land on the path. They receive the word, but immediately the accuser comes and snatches it away from them. These are the ones that land in rocky soil. They spring up quickly. They receive the word with joy, but because they have no root, At the first sign of trouble or persecution, they fall away. These are the ones that land among the thorns. They grow and they begin to sprout, but the cares of the world and the lures of wealth and the desires for things choke out the word and they bear no fruit. And these are the ones that land in the good soil. They receive the word and accept it, the word, and they bear fruit. 30, 60, and a hundredfold. Then Jesus said to them, Who would take a lamp and put it under a bushel basket or under a bed and not on a lampstand? There is nothing hidden that will not be disclosed. There is nothing in secret that will not come to light. Let everyone with ears to hear listen. And then Jesus said, Pay attention to what you hear. The measure you give is the measure you get. And to those who have, more will be given. But to those who have nothing, even what they have will be taken away. And then Jesus said, The kingdom of God is as if someone scattered seed and went to bed and woke up and went to bed. The seed sprouted and grew. He did not know how. The earth brings forth from itself. But when the harvest comes, when the grain is ripe, he gets his sickle because the time of the harvest has come. And then Jesus said, to what can I compare the kingdom of God? What would be a parable for it? The kingdom of God is like a mustard seed. Though it is very small, it is very aggressive and very invasive and grows into a huge plant so large that birds can make nests in its branches. With this and many other parables, he shared the word with them as they were able to hear it. To most, he spoke only in parables but he explained everything in private to his disciples. This is the gospel of the Lord.
Praise to you, O Christ. How does it feel when someone says to you, I have a secret? Makes you feel kind of good, doesn't it? Maybe, depending on how they say it, they're about to share something with you that's really important to them that they don't share with very many people, and it's a sign that you're growing into a deeper level of friendship. Other times, it just means they want to spill some tea, they want to gossip about something, and they want you in on it, and who can resist? There was a show in the 50s and 60s before I was born called I Have a Secret. And it's actually a really fun premise for a show. They would have a person that had a secret, including, and this was in the 50s, someone who had been at Ford's Theater the night that Lincoln was shot. They have a celebrity panel, and they have to try to guess based on questions that they're asking what the person's secret is. And the longer it goes without anyone guessing their secret, the more money that they accumulate as their prize. It is a great premise for a game show. Now, I am reluctant to critique Jesus' methods. However, I'm thinking all this secret-keeping kind of stuff isn't the best way to share the really good news of the kingdom of God in our midst. That telling really confusing, multi-layered stories that no one really understands, not even the disciples, not even after Jesus explains to them, might not be the best marketing plan. Not only that, what do you make of this story of this wasteful extravagance just scattering these seeds everywhere? Is the word of God not a precious thing that we should nurture and tend and make sure that it lands in good place that will be fruitful and multiply? Not only that, who here trusts anyone that will tell you you're going to get a 30 times return or 60 times or 100 times your investment? Do you know what they call people who offer those kinds of things? Criminals. It just seems too good to be true. Who could ever get that kind of return on investment? Not only that, you have no control at all in this kingdom. Did you hear that parable about that he scatters the seed and then he goes to bed? And the seed sprouts and it grows and all you can do is wait for the grain to be ripe and then, then, finally, you can harvest it. I remember so well on the farm as a kid, that we would be watching all summer long for the grain to be ripe, for the oats to be ripe. And it was not a fun thing to do because a storm could come and knock everything down and change everything. It felt really vulnerable to have no control at all. That's the kingdom of God. Oh, wait, there's one more thing. It is like the weed that you cannot get rid of. It is that thing that if your neighbor has it in their yard, you have it in your yard, and you have to keep working and working and working to try to get rid of it. It is invasive, it is aggressive, and it brings no good purpose in your life. That's the kingdom of God. Who wants to be a part of that? Well, good news. It's really cold outside, so I don't think any of you are leaving yet. So you all get to be part of it. This is the kingdom that we are invited to join, to be a part of, to live out of in the world. And it is chaotic, and it is abundant, and it is extravagant, and maybe even a little wasteful. You know, last week when we were talking about the new wine of Jesus' love and compassion, and we loved how it flowed around and invited new people in, I was hoping that the container for that new wine would be a little more elegant, a little more refined, rather than this mess. And yet, right here in his parables, Jesus provides a couple of perfect containers for this kingdom. The first container that Jesus provides is a seed. Are seeds not the most amazing thing? When you think about them, you buy them in the store. Of course, in Jesus' time, and actually not that long ago in our history of agriculture, uh, people would save it every year, and then they'd have to dry them out and take really good care of them. But it's this dry little piece of organic material, and when you put it in the right environment, it can grow, and you can have vegetables and fruits and trees and all kinds of amazing things. A seed is pure potential. 
It is resilient. It is strong. Have you ever seen where in a sidewalk, a little seed like a dandelion seed will fall into just the right crack and it'll burst through and it'll lift up the sidewalk and break through the concrete. That is a powerful thing embedded in that tiny little seed. Or what about those trees you see clinging to a rock face? At one point, it was a seed, probably a pine cone, that rolled and ended up in just the right spot, had just what it needed to grow, and it put its roots down, and they wrapped around the rock. It's just enough to grow and place itself there. Seeds are a powerful container, and we are a kind of seed, too. That potential for uh, bearing fruit in the kingdom of God is in us, too. But then the other container is in this parable of the four soils. Each and every soil, the wonderful thing about soil is that we know that it doesn't just stay the same always. That if we are feeling like our life is a little bit packed hard right now and the seed of the word just kind of bounces off, that it's snagged, snatched away as soon as it comes to us, we just need to get to work. We need something like those spud bars we had for those who were in Kentucky digging post holes, breaking it up, a rototiller, something. I think as we celebrate Dr. Uh, Martin Luther King's holiday on Monday that think of the breaking up work that he did for that hardened system and structure that existed. The rocky soil, you just need to pick some rocks or Find the right plants that actually thrive in a rocky, dry kind of environment, and they actually work to make the soil better. The thorns are both the hardest and maybe the easiest thing for us to deal with at the same time. Hard because the cares of the world are things that are actually really important to us, and they fill our to-do lists. The lures of wealth the desire for things, all of those are things that we experience. But the invitation is when we get to work weeding and pulling those weeds out, we see that our to-do list is actually all opportunities to bear fruit for this kingdom through the very things that we're already doing. And then we come to the good soil, which seems like the perfect place for plants to grow, but you know, here's the thing. You have to amend it every once in a while. You have to pay attention or it will become depleted. The work that we have to do, the invitation that's extended, is to keep this work happening, to keep the soil ready to receive the word, to participate fully in this kingdom. It is a secret, but it is maybe the worst-kept secret or the best-kept secret. It's hidden in plain sight. The kingdom is all around us, everywhere. We just need to be trained to look and to listen. I heard a story about a week ago. You know, everyone's talking about the migrant crisis, right? And everyone who gets on a bus in Texas is here legally, right? They're part of a legal process of what it means to apply for asylum. And they're coming up here. And on a day like today, it's very hard to believe and understand why this would feel hopeful, right? Really cold. And everyone's talking about it like a crisis, except for one person that I heard on the radio. How many of you know where Erie, Pennsylvania is? Yay! No one on Saturday night ever has been to Erie, Pennsylvania, apparently. But it has a nickname called the Mistake by the Lake. So for those of you who have been there, Erie, Pennsylvania, looks like not much is happening there. It has gone through all the cycles of death and life that happen in cities and especially in the Rust Belt, which it's part of. Do you know what they said in response to the crisis? He said, you know what? We've been doing this. The whole existence of our city has been welcoming new waves of immigrants over and over again. We have jobs. We have places to live. Come to Erie. You never know where the good soil might be. We just have to pay attention and the invitation that's extended to us to look and listen, to follow where Jesus is pointing and where Jesus is walking. In his name we pray. Amen.